everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host, Jennifer. The kids are playing video games and Little Man is particularly loud today, so you're going to hear background noises as well as Mr. Cinnamon is in the kitchen cooking, so they're gonna just, it's life, okay? <laughs> they don't even know I'm in here recording. I just wanted to pop in and hurry up and get Monday's video taken care of, so this will be Monday's video. I'm also gonna add a clip because I received Happy Mail, which I made an agreement that it wouldn't just be Happy Mail. Well, I'll just say this. I put out a um, a call for a specific yarn from the Hobby Lobby clearance, and one person answered back, and I was like, hey, I'll do a yarn swap. Just send me some yarn. <laughs> so I'm going to put that clip here. This is going to be a quick little clip that I put into another video that I have not yet recorded. But the reason I wanted to pop on right now is because I wanted to show you a yarn swap that I got. I got an email from Michelle and Michelle resides in North Carolina. She is just very shortly south of me. And she saw the video where I was looking for some more of this cake right here, which is the Sugar Wheel Cotton in the colorway Jenny's Galoshes. This was clearanced out this year, 2021, during the Hobby Lobby clearance sale. I was only able to pick up two, but I want a shirt made out of this so bad. I'm thinking like a little tee. I haven't worked up the design in my head yet, but this yarn is just talking to me. And so I put it out into the universe that I needed a couple more of these. Two or three probably would work. She sent me three. She emailed and said she had them and she would be happy to send them to me. I said, all right, but as I said in my Facebook post, I'm up for a yarn swap. So she sent me these. I have a little box ready that I'm going to send back to her. But I just wanted to stop in and say thank you, Shell. And uh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Um, your box will be on its way shortly. Your box probably will be to you by the time this video is aired. So... <laughs> Um, also, also, what did I do with the note? She put a little note in there. Michelle is part of the Froggy Went A Knitting live podcast. So if I can find the link to that, I will link it below. And check that out, please. I'm very, very gracious. I'm so excited. And I'm going to start working on a design. And this probably means that you guys will get a new pattern for hopefully all sizes. I have to work it up in my head first. I have kind of a rough idea of what I want this to be in my head because of the self-striping. Oh, my brain is going. It's just so pretty. It Usually I do not like mustardy colors at all, but the fact that it is mixed with the baby colors, I, it's just so pretty to me. It is so pretty. So thank you, Michelle. All right, guys, back to our normally scheduled whatever video I attach this to. <laughs> All right, so you should have seen the clip. Hopefully I still have it on my phone. If not, there's no clip there. <laughs> I'll have to record another one. So I'm going to show you some happy mail. And then I'm going to show you what I have been working on this past several days since pretty much the paprika video. <laughs> if you don't know about the paprika video, paprika is my little sister. Whoop, kicking the camera. Paprika is my little sister. We made an announcement that she is expecting a child in January. We are very excited, so go check that video out. Um, but let's get to the other happy mail. First of all, I received this beautiful project bag. And it came to me from Dakota and Horizon in Massachusetts. And there is this was included in it. And this says three bluebird Swedish dishcloth. Eco-friendly cleaning cloth replaces paper towels and sponges for household chores. So that is very cool. It has an unusual feeling to it, but I'm going to test it out and use it. And then there was this little envelope inside of there. And inside this envelope, this total bag, this whole thing is totally themed. So you got the bomb pops or the whatever you call these <laughs> red, white, and blue popsicle bomb pops. And then there's a knit stitch marker in here. 
that is a heart and it is the American flag. Totally, totally love this. As a matter of fact, since I showed it, it's going to go right in my knit bag, right in with my other stitch markers, because I can't wait to use it and I've been knitting, so yeah. <laughs> All right. And then inside this bag is so pretty. Look at is this not the most beautiful? And it's it's not showing up on camera, but it, it has Stellina and it is both of these are very, very, very sparkly. And these are mare, mare silk sparkle. 75% merino, 20% silk, 5% Stellina, 230 yards for this big one. This is probably just a little 20, 20 ounce. And this was dyed by Gracie Girl. This is beautiful and I know that this is meant for socks, <sighs> but I don't know if I love my feet that much, but I am going to put it aside and I'm going to consider using it for socks because I know that's what it's meant for, but it's just so beautiful and it's staying in this project bag because that is going to be on my hooks or my needles. After that, I received this from Francine in California. And inside here are three bracelets. These are so pretty beads. I love these. And this one. And then this one. And this one's probably little man size. So <laughs> me, little man, and Juju, I think. <laughs> there was no note about the bracelets. So I'm just going to say they were gifts for the three of us. And then inside, she did explain why she sent me this yarn. She bought this and made a baby blanket out of it. And this is True Boo Sparkle. It is gorgeous. She said she had a really hard time working with it. It's, bamboo does have a tendency to split. This entire thing is made out of bamboo with this pink shirt underneath. My pink summer breeze top. So I know that bamboo has a tendency to split. And I can see from looking at it, this has like a very, very gentle, glistening, glitteryness to it. It's just so stunning. So she sent me two full skeins and a little partial skein and asked if I could maybe use this. And I definitely, definitely can use this. <laughs> and I think it's gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. And it's one of those yarns that I found to be too expensive for me to actually buy for myself. So I'm actually, I'm not going to shove that back in there. I'm glad to have that. So thank you so much, Francine. And then this came from Karen in North Carolina. This was, I think this was for Juju. <laughs> Let me, yes, the beads are for your daughter for help with her business and they were yarn chickens. So if you are one of those who has been trying to get your hands on some of her yarn chicken stitch markers, she got some more. Thank you to Karen. And she will be putting more in the shop soon if they're not already there. She's been working her little tushy off getting um, beads made into beautiful things. She's making jewelry now too, but she's doing that for herself and for the joy. And I find that very important. And, I, and I'm encouraging her to continue to make the bracelets and the necklaces that she's working on because if it come, becomes too much of a business and it's too much of work, I know she's going to lose interest because that's how I am. And she's 16. So, you know, I'm encouraging that. And then I got this box from... Colorado. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Let me check the card. This is from Amy in Colorado. And there's a little pouch inside with these gorgeous crocheted earrings. Now, I do not wear earrings. I had holes. I have not wore earrings in over 10 years. So in order to get earrings in my ears, I would have to re-pierce them. But Juju has fallen in love with these, so I'm going to pass them on to her. She thinks they are beautiful, as do I. 
And so I'm going to pass those on to her. But thank you so much because I know, I know how much it takes to make these little teensy little, I mean, you can see how small that is. <laughs> it's teens. That looked really hairy when I pulled it up close, but it doesn't look that hairy. That's fiber from the yarn that's in the box. It's not gross, dirty, hairy. <laughs> dirty, hairy. All right. All right. And then there were four of these, which if you guys knew, this is the yarn from the clip that I should have inserted that I was on the lookout for. There was four of these. So now I have enough to make probably two tops. <laughs> and this is the Jenny's Galoshes from Hobby Lobby. I am so excited. I am so, so grateful. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to be a gift or a yarn swap. So Amy, if you want a box back, just let me know and I will gladly send it off to you. I am so grateful that you sent me that yarn. I am very, very happy. Love it. Love it. All right, so that's it for Happy Mail. So let's move the Happy Mail onto Mr. Cinnamon's chair so it is out of the way so <laughs> now on to the baby stuff this is not okay it's not just I'm showing baby stuff this is me practicing my knitting because as you guys know well a lot of you who have been around for over a year you guys know that last year last summer I believe I finally learned to knit. It took me two years to finally get it because my brain could not wrap around going from a crochet hook that pulls the yarn to two needles. And I'm staring at these needles and I'm like, okay, what the heck am I supposed to do with it? How, how do you make loops out of points? My alarm went off. I need to go water my plants apparently, but it's been raining, so I'm good. I had to send an alarm to remind me to go water my plants. <laughs> so I would stare at the needles and I don't even have any close by to show you. And I, I just don't, it just did not click. I didn't understand how to wrap the yarn, how to hold the yarn, how to, it just was, and I, every time I think I would get it, I would set it down and I'd go back to it and I'd be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'd completely lose it. And like the idea of looking and seeing what is a knit and what is a pearl was so confusing to me for a very long time. So when I finally got it after two years and now I can knit in the round and I can make things and I'm working on a king size knit blanket. These are a huge, huge, huge accomplishment to me because I could not as a crocheter <laughs> understand knitting because I have never in my entire 42 years of life, well I'm not 42 yet, but my entire 41 and a half years of life, I have never sat in the room with someone else that has knitting. I've never seen it in real life. Videos are okay, but like, I I just, I don't know. I needed more than just the videos, I think. And so when it finally clicked, I'm so happy that it clicked. So I haven't picked up the needles for quite some time. I was working on the king size blanket, which is just garter stitch. So it's it's very simple. But I haven't worked on it in a couple months and I haven't really been knitting. And knitting is a lot slower for me than crocheting. I crochet really fast, as you guys can probably tell by how many objects I finished in a short period. <laughs> but knitting is a lot slower to me and it's something that I have to be like relaxed to knit because I tense up and I, you know, it's like a whole thing. So I decided, and I, I shared this in the video with Paprika, that I am going to knit her objects instead of crochet because she can crochet now so she can make her own crocheted stuff but I want something that's uniquely Aunt Jenny something that's from Aunt Jenny that is just from that she'll never say did I make this or did Jen make it no this is she can't knit she has no interest in ever learning to knit so that's what we're gonna do so I was going through my books I have a lot of books and actually I didn't go through the books under my desk I have a whole stack under there of books that have been gifted from you guys mostly and I found this in my bookshelf and I got this from the dollar store. This was at the Dollar Tree some time ago. And I don't know why I bought it because I had no idea that there were gonna be babies coming into my life. But I was like, oh, look at the cute patterns. So I went thumbing through this and the patterns are written horribly for my brain. And I don't know if it's that it's just, well, I'm gonna say this. The patterns 
for because this is knit and crochet the crochet patterns are written as if it's written by a knitter so instead of chain 20 it says cast on 20 chain stitches so i'm like okay like i can figure out that that means to chain 20 but like it's written weird and so all the lingo that is in these patterns is just written not what i'm used to for crochet patterns so i went through and I was trying to make just a very, very simple beanie. And the only beanie that I'm really familiar with and really can do easily is the Ross beanie, which is from Smell Smell Great Guy or Smells Like Yarn. I will link him below. I always link him when I talk about him. I'm trying to find the pattern that I, I was going off of. So I was flipping through this book and there are really cute patterns in here. So I found this one and I was like, okay, the body of this basically looks like the Ross hat. It's very similar, right? So I was like, well, I can figure out from this and then just do kind of like fudge along where I'm supposed to start the de decreases because I can't follow it from this pattern because I don't want that weird tie in the top. I don't care for that. So I was like, so I'm going to take the pattern from this and I'm going to use what I have learned from Ross and I'm going to turn it into like a mini Ross beanie. But I got the pattern initially from here and the numbers. So I had to take into consideration that this says using five millimeter needles. I have four millimeter needles. So I had to figure out the math to make it a little bit bigger than what it was going to be so that it would fit a baby head. And I went from there. And from that, I created, this is so cute, this little teeny tiny baby hat. <laughs> From, and this was from scrap balls that I had in my scrap bin down there. And this is Lion Brand Ice Cream Yarn. I think it's Blue Moon colorway. And so, I, this was just a practice, but it's so pretty. It made me so happy. And so I just did the decreases there. Now, let me show you what it looks like on a baby head. Now this is Little Man's Baby. It is dirty. I've tried washing this doll. It does not come clean. It is stained. But Little Man is a boy and... Anybody that's been around little boys just knows. I don't have to explain further. So this is what it looks like. And this baby's head is very similar to, I've measured it. It's very similar to a newborn size head, except his ears are hard and stick out. So <laughs> this has been my model. I actually thought about buying myself a baby doll. I had one in my shopping cart today at Target. I was gonna buy myself a baby doll so that I could model hats on it and try hats on the baby. I couldn't find a baby that I really liked. So. Little man's baby doll is working for now. So I started with that one. And I was like, okay, well let's try with a more neutral colorway. So I made this. Now, it looks funky because it's <laughs> it's entirely ribbed. So it's just ribbing all the way around. So instead of going, like doing the ribbing and only doing the ribbing so far and then going in a straight knit, I just ribbed all the way around. And I'm actually quite happy with this little beanie. There are like imperfections, but this was me practicing. So, and this is ice cream in the colorway cookies and cream. Again, this is scraps and leftovers I had. And then I had to figure out a decrease that I liked. So I kind of played with the numbers and the decreases. And I think it turned out pretty good considering I'm very new at knitting still. But I'm totally happy with that. And then I went back to the blue moon and I made another one, a bigger size one, because I'm trying to figure out cast on sizes. So this is significantly bigger. Don't, don't put your hats on your babies like this because they won't like it. <laughs> but this is definitely a bigger size up. So this is probably zero to three months instead of newborn. And I did more increases. So I'm trying to figure out what the best recipe is for these little the little hats and then like i said i was going into my scrap bin and i'm finding little balls of scraps seriously my scraps are this big and so while i was looking through this book i also saw another pattern and as a matter of fact this is the pattern right here i'll show you bigger and i fell in love with it but again the pattern is written really weird. It's just, I don't like the way it's written. I don't understand what the heck they're talking about. 
and it's got knitting and crochet in it. So that is the pattern. And I'm like, okay, well, I've made adult size headbands that look exactly like this. They got the ribbing on the top, some straight knit, and then the ribbing on the, or the ribbing on the bottom, the straight knit, and then the ribbing on the top. I've made headbands like this for myself. They're super comfortable. You can make them just wide enough to cover your ears. You can also make them just wide enough to like pull your hair back. And so taking that in mind, I pulled out a scrap ball of yarn and I made this cute little baby headband. And I will show it to you on Lucas's baby. cute little <laughs> I fell so in love with this pattern I was like it's a little tiny baby headband and it covers the ears even on this hard plastic ears is that not cute I mean the colors are not babyish at all but this was me practicing trying to figure out numbers and what I liked so made that one and then there was this little tiny ball of Premier Nordica in my scrap bin you guys know how I feel about Nordica if you've been around. I love Nordica. I love the bloom. And so I made this one. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. I just, I don't know. I love the way the pattern works up in the Nordica. I think like you can almost see like a reindeer here and then here if you turn it a certain way it almost looks like it's elvish writing elvish yeah super super cute so that's where i tied off i have not gotten my ties off perfect yet but it's for a baby a baby ain't gonna care you can just put that part to the back is that not pretty i love that i now it would have been better if I had dark blue here and then dark blue on the top. But like I said, this was a scrap ball and this was just me practicing. And then, and then this is the last one. I had a little tiny scrap ball of this Cotton Fair in, and this is Premier 2, in the colorway Yellow Flash. This reminds me of U of M, University of Michigan colors. And I had a bunch of this and I made my niece, my 16 year old niece I made her a poncho kind of like um my ponchito pattern but it was a little bit it was altered for her body because she's really really skinny and so I had a little tiny ball left over and I was like well I'm gonna pull it out and see if I can squeeze a hat out of it I could not squeeze a hat out of it I got to the part where I was decreasing and then I ran out of yarn so I was like I know I got more in there so I pulled some out and I pulled out just enough to finish it but I think this hat is so cute. I love baby stuff that is not like typical baby colors. I just love it. Like when I was a photographer, I had a baby that I did a newborn session on and his dad was like super into University of Michigan. Like everything was Wolverines, everything, everything. His blanket, his entire outfit. And I did a photo session with this theming in mind and this is what this little hat reminds me of. And this little baby is now like 12 years old. <laughs> he might even be older than that. But um, I I posted some of the pictures on my, my old photography Pinterest. And like it was being picked up by, like it was it was being used by and it was being re-pinned by um, the University of Michigan's football team. It was being shared by... Um, the Harlem Globetrotters like were sharing some of my images because of the, the link to that image. It was really, it was a cool time for me. And so <laughs> I have good memories that are linked to this little hat. This hat has made me, and I know it's showing up kind of gray in the picture, but is this not the cutest? I really like the way the pooling turned out. I love the color in it. And I just think that is the cutest little baby hat ever cutest little baby hat ever and I'm totally having so much fun knitting these little hats up I'm having a blast and so now I'm like flipping through this book and I have some more books I'm gonna flip through because I have some more stuff that I want to make and honestly my sister's not getting all these hats and headbands I'm making them for the fun of it I'm making them for my own pure joy which I know sounds weird but and I, I even told Mr. Cinema, I was like, some of these are probably going to be donated just to the hospital. 
because I'm making them for practice right now. And how cute are these little booties? I want to make these next. Yeah, so I've been knitting a lot. <laughs> I've been knitting exclusively for the past four days. I can whip out a hat and a headband every single day throughout the day stopping and taking a little bit of time to knit. And so I've been having fun just making that. Now I'm finding joy in my needles again. And now I need to clean out my need to clean out my bag because there's so much junk in there right now for me using it. And then I realized um, I ordered some time ago. Well, I didn't order these. Mr. Cinnamon bought these for me. These are the shorty needles from Chegu. And they only go down to four millimeter. And these are short. These make it very easy to work small projects in the round. Socks, fingerless mitts, little baby hats are so much easier with these shorty needles because you get a shorter circumference around that you can work in. So much easier. But only having the four millimeters, I, it's kind of gappy with some of the thinner yarns I've been working with. And so I had to go on Amazon. I actually ordered myself, I think, three millimeters just to see if I like the three millimeters in the shorty red twist ones. And then I'll probably have to buy myself a set of those because I really want to cast on some more socks. And I think working these little tiny hats is going to help me to practice so that I can, because let's face it, that's about the size of my foot. My foot, I have big feet. <laughs> so I could, I could almost turn this into a sock. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I definitely could turn this into a sock. Look at that's almost a sock right there. Although I don't think I would like walking on ribbing like that. That seems like it would be just too much. But yeah, that could be the tip of a sock, right? If I worked it backwards. So it's all practice so that I can make myself some more socks because honestly I've been scared to cast on socks. I also want to cast on a shawl that I found on Universal's website that is gorgeous. And I don't know why knitting still scares me so much. Like, there is so much that scares me. Like, I'm afraid I'm going to mess up. I'm afraid I'm not going to understand. Because knitting patterns are way different than crochet patterns. And I'm, I'm not real good at reading them. So I think I'm going to challenge myself to start some new projects very soon. I still have a tank top that I want to cast on. So I think if I work on the shawl, it will get me practice for doing different stitches and doing more expansive things than just working crochet or knit working straight knit in the round or working ribbing in the round and so that's what my goal is for the future now because i noticed i've been doing a lot of um projects for other people and not anything for my own joy and i really need to get back to doing that because i think that's what's leaving leading me to feel burned out and stressed is because like I don't have time for projects for myself and some of my favorite yarns are sitting there staring at me and I can't use them because I'm working on like this I made this honestly this summer breeze top it fits me I made it for myself to wear but I made it for the channel to show it off and then make another one for the channel so that I had one in my size with the point in the front and the back and because people were like saying that their points were going off to the side. And so I was like, well, I need to figure out what's, what's causing that. So I did figure out what's causing the points to go to the side <laughs> by doing it myself on purpose on this. Um, if you're working in the round, when you get to the peak, there is what looks like an extra stitch here. And if you crochet into that stitch, it makes the peak drift. So avoid the first little stitch right there in the peak and go into the actual next double crochet or work the pattern back and forth. So instead of when you connect the front and the back here and you start going in the round, instead of going in the round the same direction, when you get to where you chain to connect and you chain up, go in the opposite direction the next row. You will get like a line, but it's not a big deal and it stops the turning so i figured it out hopefully it helps some of you but i'm gonna let you guys go because this video is almost at 30 minutes and little man is being louder and louder and he keeps coming by the door he's on his scooter and he's like just loud and loud i know you guys can hear him 
he very much is demanding. I did say that in another video. He's very demanding of my attention the past week or so. So, all right, guys. I will go and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.